Hi guys, my name is Leonie Vredel and I'm very proud to be sitting next to Jason Samuel Smith, who's giving a tap dance workshop here in Antwerp in Belgium. Hi Jason. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Fine, thanks. Nice to have you here. Thanks, nice to be here. It's my first time. So you're doing this interview right now and you've been teaching the whole day through yesterday. You're teaching today. Tonight will be a jam session. Is this kind of a normal day for a professional tap dancer? Every day. <laughs> <laughs> Either workshops or some kind of performance or some kind of jam session. Definitely. This is every day for me right now. Wow. And how many hours do you dance a day? I don't know. <laughs> All day, every day. Uh, you know, if I'm doing workshops like this, I'm dancing, you know, at least four hours to five hours a day. So, mm -hmm. but if not, you know, I try to practice at least one hour or two hours for myself. There's one of the dancers that does it, and the step is like this. read that Bojangles needed 20 to 30 shoes a year. What about you? <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe, maybe around the same. Uh, I, I usually wear out a pair of tap shoes maybe in two or three months. So I usually try to have like more than one pairs of tap shoes at a time, maybe like three so I can rotate them and one pair doesn't get to worn out mm -hmm. quickly. I've been uh, working with the, the shoe company Block um, and develop my own shoe. So they sponsor me and they send me shoes. Mm -hmm. So luckily I don't have to pay for these shoes all, mm -hmm. all the time. I'd be broke. <laughs> I would spend all my money on shoes if that was <laughs> the case. But um, so I go through at least one pair every, every two or three months. And what's special about the Jason Samuel Smith tap shoe? Um, well, it's one of the most comfortable tap shoes ever, I think. Uh, I really appreciate the tone and the sound mm -hmm. that the shoe creates. And um, it's built to sustain a lot of dancing. So it's reinforced a lot of the places where the shoe would split apart or break. Mm -hmm. We've put more attention into you know, securing it. And the, the leather that is used is very high quality leather. And the taps are a bit bigger than the normal tap used on a tap shoe. So it creates a different sound and also the, the taps last longer. So in general, I think it's a very high quality shoe and it's comfortable. Okay, let me get this right. You're going to be 32 next week, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> yes, I will be 32 next week. Yeah, I mean, this is so amazing because I've read what you've done, what what you've done, and I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> you've already <laughs> traveled the whole world. You've danced with people like Gregory Hines or Debbie Allen. You've learned from Saving Glover. You've danced in a Michael Jackson video, you've been on Broadway, you've been on television, you've won an Emmy Award, and so on. <laughs> <laughs> More so, to come. I'm not doing enough yet. I'm not doing enough. Yep, yeah, but what are you planning to do <laughs> for the rest of your life? <laughs> well, there's a lot of work to be done. I think even though tap dance is becoming popular in dance communities, um, we don't have much commercial visibility. Mm -hmm. So the challenge is to get tap dance out to the, the masses and also to cross over into different styles of music and dance so that more people are aware of the existence of tap dance. Mm -hmm. And I would like to see more collaborations with musical artists so that you can hear tap on recordings 
on the radio, you know, on the internet, see it at a concert in front of 20,000, 30,000 people. So we're not there yet, you know, we have, in our community, we, we still have very small gatherings and workshops and festivals, but I see them growing every year. Every time I travel, I see a new community that has a different energy and a different flow. So people are all excited about TAP, but the, the public is not aware right. of what's happening. So the challenge is to just get it, get our art form out to the public, to the people. The best way to do this is, is through television and film, but these are two mediums that I'm not, I don't really like to participate in. I prefer live performance, I prefer mm -hmm. workshops, I prefer, you know, more interaction with the people. Now one more time, with that first part. Now, this is a step from Leon Collins. Leon Collins, if you know who Diane Walker is, Leon Collins is, yeah. <laughs> Leon Collins is Diane Walker's teacher. So, remember, it's all about the pattern. Those are alternating five sound wings. And then if you do them with the same feet or at the same time, that's a five sound wing. One footed is really, really hard. I might try. Might not do it. And what is the situation of professional dancers and especially professional tap dancers like in the USA? Well, there, um, there are different opportunities. Most tap dancers that are professional are working more as teachers. Mm -hmm. So most of the work that's consistent is coming from workshops and classes. Mm -hmm. But at this point, when tap dancers want performing opportunities, they usually create them themselves. Mm -hmm. So they'll either form a group and create a company or they'll, you know, meet up with musicians and singers and create some kind of show with them. So a lot of the opportunities come from the people themselves and they create these opportunities. Some people create a jam session, some people create a festival. Tap dancers have been influential in popular culture since it was created. And so we're still influencing popular culture whether people know that we're doing it or not. Yeah. You know, Michael Jackson was taking private tap lessons until he died. Yeah. And most people don't know that, but he loved tap. And people loved him, and they don't even realize that there was a connection there. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's... Uh, Tap dancers have always been influential in, in society, but now I think we, we need to get to the level of people getting the, the respect they deserve mm -hmm. and dancers being appreciated like athletes or like singers or like musicians, you know? Yeah. I mean, if tap dancers had this level, then who knows? I, I wouldn't, maybe I wouldn't be working so hard. <laughs> maybe I could relax a little more, but uh, because there's less opportunities on, on those higher platforms, we have to work harder. We have to do more to bring the communities together. We have to share more with each other, be less selfish, because I think some people, when they have a workshop or they have a studio, they only want to keep their students to themselves and they don't, they don't want them to see other teachers or yeah. experience new things. But as a teacher, you should always want your students to get better than you. To get out. To get out, to experience the yeah. world and to, to, you know. So I think we, we, we have to not think of our own personal success and think mm -hmm. about how much money we can make and you know, how many students we can accumulate and how many awards we can win. These are not important things. We have to think about the future of the dance. And the only way you can secure the future is if you have the youth, you have the elders, mm -hmm. and you have the respect of the people. And so we have to bring everyone together. And I think tap dancers do a, a good job of, of uniting people. Mm -hmm. But 
we have to do more. We're not doing enough yet. <laughs> yeah. And looking back, uh, what is your most impressive memory? You've already talked about Michael Jackson. How was it to, <laughs> to work with him? It was incredible. Um, definitely one of the highlights of my life. But there's so many moments I can say. Um, I think just dancing and getting to know some of the top masters, you know, mm -hmm. people like Jimmy Slide and Buster Brown, Peg Leg Bates, you know, just having these experiences to see them perform and also to meet them and talk to them, the Nicholas Brothers, Bunny Briggs, yeah. Jenny Lagan, you know, I, these these moments in my life are the most special. And Gregory Hines, who is my idol, um, getting to meet him and work with him, <clears throat> with him, I think was one of the highlights of my life. So, but at this point, I've, I'm having so many great experiences around the world that it's hard to to say this is better than that. Anyone who usually sees or hears tap enjoys it. But it's the kind of thing that's out of sight, out of mind. If yeah. you don't see it, you forget about it. Nobody talks about it. But when people see it, they love it. Yeah. So we just have to keep it in people's face, in their ears, in their consciousness. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll have more opportunity. That's it. Thank you guys for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for this interview. It was copacetic talking to you. It's all copacetic. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, people, for watching and stay tuned and see you soon.